Broadcasting from Manhattan Beach and the World Wide Web, you're listening to CHSR, HealthyLife.net. As a service to our listeners, this program is for general information and entertainment purposes only. CHSR, HealthyLife.net does not recommend, endorse, or object to the views, products, or topics expressed or discussed by show hosts or their guests. We suggest you always consult with your own personal, medical, financial, or legal advisor. And welcome back to the Dr. Teresa Nicasio Show. This is a place of inspiration, education, and hope for a healthier, more compassionate, and a sustainable world. For those of you who don't know me, I'm an integrative psychologist who believes that empowerment through education and hope is one of the most important ways that we can improve our emotional well-being. On this program, I invite inspirational guests change makers and international leaders in the fields of health and the environment to share their knowledge, experiences, and wisdom with you, and today is no exception. Um, my purpose for doing this is to help you in your efforts to change your own life and also to harness the growing vision for change to make the world a better place for everyone. To make a donation to support the continuance of this program, or if you have products or services you would like to share with my wonderful audience as a sponsor or advertiser, go to the TeresaNicasio.com website and click on the Donate button at the bottom of the page. With over a million monthly listeners to the network syndicated around the world and 63,000 monthly listeners to my show alone, it's a wonderful vehicle to spread the word about your business or enterprise, whatever you've got going. You can also email me directly at Teresa at TeresaNicasio.com. And again, it's Teresa with an H. Nicasio has one C and two S's. So it's T-H-E-R-E-S-A at T-H-E-R-E-S-A-N-I-C-A-S-S-I-O.com. Be sure to join us next week when Kristen Andress will be with us talking about the importance of goodness. Then in two weeks, we'll have Dr. Jill Carnahan back with us talking about overactive histamine response called mast cell activation syndrome. In three weeks, we'll have Dr. Barb Dupree talking about lifelong intimacy, love into the Middle Ages. Uh, if you have questions for any of my upcoming guests, be sure to send them to me through my TeresaNicasio.com website or email. Again, my website is T-H-E-R-E-S-A. N like Nancy, I C A S S I O dot com. And my email is just Teresa at Teresa Nicasio dot com. So you are in for a real treat with today's guest who is here with us all the way from Australia. Love this, the land down under. Uh, revolutionary nutritionist and filmmaker Cindy O'Meara is breaking ground and raising a lot of eyebrows with her new documentary movie called What's With Wheat, which I think is now on Netflix as well. We're going to hear more about that later. Cindy is joining us amidst her busy film tour where she is featuring experts at screenings all across North America who are talking about this really important topic that is just now people are just now understanding is not a fad but is actually a real thing that you're going to learn more about from Cindy today. For her film, Cindy has courageously pulled together scientists and food activists from around the globe who reveal some alarming information and data about what is currently happening to our wheat and talk about how the rubber is now hitting the pavement with regard to the human experimentation that we've all been participating in, mostly unknowingly, and our poor kids have been growing up with it. Um, in this hard-hitting investigation, into this controversial and sociopolitically complex minefield, Cindy's movie explores the question about whether our modern wheat production and the amount of wheat we daily consume could be contributing to the global health crisis. Cindy, thank you so much for taking time away from your busy schedule to join us today. Well, thank you, Dr. Terry, for having me on your show. Yeah, no, this is, this is a real treat. So, you know, I, I think you've probably heard some of my shows, so you probably know that I like to go where the juice is. Uh, you know, it's just being real, let's just, just get right down to business here. And I, so I wonder if you could start first by sharing a bit about what led you to become so passionate about, uh, what I'm calling, dethroning one of our most beloved foods. <laughs> yeah. Well, I have been interested in prevention and diet uh, for probably 
four decades now. So I became a nutritionist finally 33 years ago. And I have eaten everything from scratch. I've made all my own bread, cake, cookies. Um, we have a one-ingredient pantry. We don't buy packaged food. So I know how to feed myself and my family. Mm-hmm. And, of course, I do a lot of research. And anyway, about the age of 49, 50, I was coming up, and up to, I started to put weight on. I was getting anxiety at 3 in the morning. I had sore joints, a very sore lower back that had been happening for about 18 months. I had a very sore right hip, um, but I thought I was going to need hip replacement. It, I was in so much pain with it. Mm. I was becoming stiff, dry skin, dry hair. And I was thinking, if this is 50, then I don't want to really go there. Or my other question was, maybe it's something I'm eating. Being a nutritionist, you know, you, you think, well, maybe it's something that I'm consuming. So I went on a, an elimination protocol where I just ate very lean meat, small amounts of food, green vegetables, and a couple of fruits, so maybe apples, berries, and citrus. Mm-hmm. And over a three-week period, I lost all the weight I had gained over that two-year period. All my aches and pains disappeared. Absolute clarity of mind. Wanted to jump and skip and play. My flexibility in three weeks came back. It was like a miracle had happened. Mm-hmm. So then I thought, well, I'll introduce foods back into the diet and just see what is causing the problem. Mm-hmm. And I think about two weeks into introduction, I introduced sourdough bread. Uh, and... Uh, everything came back in a 24-hour period. Not the, the weight, because I, you know, it was nearly 20 pounds, but I did nearly put on uh, two pound of weight, which means that I was holding water because you can't put that much fat on overnight. Mm-hmm. And so that was what led me to, well, what's wrong with this beautiful grain that I know we've been consuming for up to 23,000 years because that is as long as... Um, the wheat grain um, that we know, the traditional wheat grain has existed on the planet. So I figured we'd we'd started to probably use it at that point. So I wanted to know what's happened to wheat. And and so for for many years I read, listened, looked at studies, and at the end of it my husband said to me, well, now that you know what's wrong with wheat and you think that it's a disaster to human health, are you going to write another book? And I said, no, I'd, you know, I'd already written nine books. So I was kind of over that. He said, why don't you do a documentary? And, and that's the result of the documentary, uh, What's With Wheat, is that he said, let's do it. So um, I traveled the world interviewing the most amazing scientists, farmers, medical doctors, uh, food activists to, to put this together. And um, the result is, is that we have a real problem and we need to get that information out there so that people can make their own decisions and not be cajoled by a food industry. Yeah. Well, you know, uh, and again, you probably have seen it in my book, Yum, how I, uh, I, I find finding myself, I've become quite a food activist around this too, and I never would have expected that because I'm not like a, I'm not a zealot about some of the, you know, I don't like to tell anybody what to do or what not to do. I'm still not telling anybody what to do or what not to do, but, but to have the information, and for me, I also, it was, I, I actually had migraines my whole life, didn't realize, uh, there already is a lot of autoimmune problems in my family, it's a whole other story, um, but I didn't realize that, you know, the allergies, but also especially the migraines, uh, I had ever since I was like, uh, as far as I remember as a toddler um, hitting my head, um, that I discovered when I was 45 that those were optional, and I didn't discover till I had done the elimination diet like you did. Uh, I had other problems that also got made things really bad, and that's why I did the elimination diet. So I can't tell you enough how I, I, was just, I just feel so happy and grateful that you have done the work in pulling together this information, which, again, I've been doing a lot of the same research um, and trying. That's part of why I didn't have this show is to help get information out, but to pull it together in a way that people can understand. And, and as you talk about in the movie and some of the experts talk about this, you know, the grain has been around for over thousands of years now, and it's become an integrated part of our history. And as a psychologist, I know when something is that cultural, Really embedded. It's it's really a tough habit to break. Um, so, can you talk a little bit about what your experiences have been as you're as you're gathering this information and you're sharing the message with your movie? Yeah, I, I decided to go back and do the history first. I felt that it was important that people knew that this was a part of our history and that it was because mm-hmm. of uh, the grain and especially the wheat grain that we went from hunter gatherer. Um, 
to a more less nomadic life and a more settled life. And because of that being settled and being able to grow our own foods, uh, we were able to become where we are today. Um, we couldn't have done this as hunter-gatherers because if you look at the Australian Aboriginal people in, um, in my country, you know, they were agriculturalists, but they didn't stay stable. They were peaceful agriculturalists, and so they did their nomadic life, but they would come back to um, their plots of land. But they didn't um, do what, uh, what we have done, and that is stay in one place and... Um, do what we're doing right now mm -hmm. so that was where it all started and then it was like well what happened so I then went through the agricultural revolution and 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 what had happened as a result of that and I think the most important thing is is that um, the wheat grain has been refined mm -hmm. um, as a result of that refinement there's less nutrition in it so they add back vitamins and minerals those vitamins are coming from laboratories they're coming from mines they're not coming from food mm -hmm. we eat it all the time so we'll have it we think we're having variety by having breakfast cereal in the morning um, uh, like a piece of bread or even a bagel for morning tea and then lunch we might have a sandwich and then for afternoon tea we might have you know a donut or something like that and then for dinner we may have pizza or pasta mm -hmm. so you think you're having variety, but you're actually eating the same grain that is refined. And because of the agricultural revolution and what has been happening to our wheat grain, it's probably laced with poisons, um, mm -hmm. most likely a, uh, a chemical called glyphosate, which is mm -hmm. uh, sprayed on not every wheat field, but many wheat fields um, as a desiccant, which kills the wheat but makes it grow more grain. Um, so it is a higher yielding uh, grain. So we had all of these things that has happened to the wheat grain, and I think there's been the straw that broke the camel's back. Mm -hmm. And the straw that broke the camel's back, I believe, is that we not only have changed the grain itself through its refinement, its hybridisation, the agricultural um, revolution, what we have also done is that we've destroyed the very ability for us to be able to even digest the grain, break down the gluten, um, eat the fruit tans, which is in the grain as well, we, we've lost that ability because we've destroyed a part of our gut um, called the microbiome or the microbiota um, by the use of antibiotics, um, generational epigenetics, by the use of steroids, PPIs, uh, glyphosate is a biocide. It's, in, in 2010, it became, it got a new patent as a biocide, so we know it's an antibiotic killing uh, the bacteria in our gut. And these, these gut bacteria, and I know your uh, listeners will know this, but these gut bacteria do amazing things to help us live in a symbiotically world, symbiotic world with them. And they produce our B vitamins, our vitamin K, tryptophan, tyrosine, uh, phenylalanine, which helps us make our neurotransmitters. It also helps us digest our, our proteins, such as gluten and gliadin. Um, it helps us um, use fructose so that we don't have fructose malabsorption. So I believe it's this accumulation of factors that have happened, but we've had the store that's broken the camel's back. Yeah. And we've got to get that back. We, we have to change this, and the only way to change it is to as an individual, make the decision to know where your food is coming from and what sprays and chemicals have been sprayed on it and, and, and take a step back from drugs and medicine um, as long as you're not in a life-threatening situation and right. find a new path for our health. Right. Well, I, I love what, you know, Dr. Uh, Perlmutter was on, is one of the experts on, on the show, and one of the things he, he talked about that I thought was really important was uh, one of the arguments uh, in favor of glyphosate is that it only kills plants and, um, and bacteria. Uh, but the reality is our body is mostly, is 90% bacteria that's not us and only like 10% human cells. So if we're only killing, you know, the bacteria and, and plant body, we're, we're only killing 90% of ourselves. So that it's like, oh, that's really very comforting. Um, it puts it in, in, in such a powerful 
um, perspective. And there's, there's something, in, and when Jill Carnahan was on the show, she mentioned briefly, I believe, um, about how glyphosate interacts with the with the um, gliadin, with the gluten, and it creates a whole other problem, which you were alluding to some of that. Can you talk a little bit about, about that and how it affects the, the uh, sugar absorption, the fructose absorption? Oh, yes. Yeah. So... Uh, one of the things that's been identified, and it was identified out of a university uh, in Australia, Monash University, is something called fructose malabsorption. So fructose malabsorption is when uh, we're not absorbing our fructose, which is an active way that we absorb it, as opposed to glucose, which is passive. So if we're not absorbing this fructose, it gets down into the lower part of the small intestine and into the large intestine, where it shouldn't be, and it starts to feed the bacteria, and we'll get symptoms like IBS. So why all of a sudden is fructose malabsorption a problem when it wasn't a problem, you know, probably two decades ago? And what happens is that um, fructose is the input to a pathway called the shikimate pathway, which is done by our bacteria in our gut, which produces our aromatic amino acids, such as tyrosine, phenylalanine, and um, tryptophan. Mm -hmm. So if... So what happens is glyphosate stops the shikimate pathway. So it stops an enzyme that progresses the shikimate pathway. So when there's that stop happening, then there's a buildup of the first compound in the shikimate pathway, which is called PEP. As a result of too much PEP, fructose, which is the input to PEP, can't be used, and so it ends up going straight down the small intestine into the large intestine and causes IBS symptoms. So once again, it's interacting there with the fructans in the wheat um, as opposed to the gliadin and the gluten in the wheat. So it's, it's, what's happening is that we've got this um, cascade of effects that is, as Dr. Stephanie Finesse says in the movie, is a train wreck in the human body. So, you know, that's just one thing. Then, then we look at, it was in 1963, glyphosate was patented as a chelating agent. So something that binds with minerals such as calcium and magnesium, manganese, uh, as well as heavy metals. So it oh will bind God. with it. So we're losing minerals out of our um, gastrointestinal tract or any foods that you're consuming that might have minerals in it if you've got glyphosate with it. We're losing minerals out through that way as well. So when you look at the, the effects that glyphosate is having, not only we can't digest our gluten, we can't um, use our fructose, we can't make our amino acids, it collates with our minerals. You can see why we have this epidemic of diseases that we don't even know why we have this epidemic. It, it's, you know, the doctors don't know what to do. They're just giving um, drugs to solve the symptom. But when we really look at what, what is happening, we realize that we are destroying our ability to do many processes in our body by destroying um, our gut bacteria. This is so big. And so, folks, I realize this is a lot of information. You're going to want to watch the movie, which, again, it, it is on Netflix, right? Yes, it's on North And American it's in Netflix. a lot of places. So I have uh, created, I don't know if you saw, but I've created your um, um, profile page. And on that profile page, there are links to all kinds of, of places. So can you just list off, it's like iTunes, U.S., iTunes, Canada. It's like all over. Can you just list some of the places where your movie can be watched? Oh, I knew you'd ask me that. I'm, oh, I don't worry about that. that. <laughs> we'll come back. about 10. <laughs> my, my team know all of those, but I do know that the iTunes, Netflix is, is two of them. But the other one where you can go is you to watch too. with wheat.com. You can go there, <laughs> and you'll have a link to that. That's and all on there. It, yep, they're all there. Yeah, and it will tell you exactly where you can find it. Yeah, so this is this is really important. Now, I want to come back to the shikimate process, uh, shikimate pathway, S-H-I-K-A, uh, no, S-H-I-K-A-M-A-T-E, -I, -E, I believe. But, again, you'll see it on the movie. Yeah. Look this yeah. up, guys, because the other piece, I, um, yeah, I'm a psychologist. So I've been, I've been doing this practice for 30 years, just like you have been around the, the block. And the increase in anxiety and depression and learning disabilities and attention deficit. Okay, so one of the things that, uh, that uh, is that also the neurotransmitters, 
it impairs the ability for the inner tra- uh, neurotransmitters, which is part of why I believe we're seeing more of an increase. And we're going to have to take a break. But this is really important stuff, folks. So um, uh, we will come back shortly with, uh, with this wonderful Cindy to hear more about what's with wheat when we come back. Being inspired by a speaker while learning everyday positive information that you can use to help your life is exactly what Dr. Teresa Nicasio does when she speaks in front of your group. From healthcare professionals to special needs parenting and everything in between, Dr. Teresa Nicasio can customize topics for your group on everything from health to psychology. To book Dr. Teresa Nicasio as a speaker for your group, visit yumfoodforliving.com or call 604-445-6463. That's 604 604- Four four five six four six three. For all your live or pre-recorded webcasting needs, come to earthchannel.com. Get your web-based message out to a select group or the whole world. It's easy. A pioneer in webcasting, earthchannel.com provides the best products and services to big corporations and government users. And now, this same technology is available to you. They have the best Earthcast encoders, servers, and products to meet your technical needs. But wait, don't want to mess with technical stress? No problem. They'll do it for you. EarthChannel.com is your answer. You can use webcasting for lots of things like advertising, marketing, customer support, training, and don't forget, web radio and TV. In fact, you're listening to a live EarthCast right now. So come to EarthChannel.com. Actualize your audio or video webcasting needs today. You can't beat the friendly service or the price. Call earthchannel.com at 1-800-849-8978. That's 1-800-849-8978. Yumfoodforliving.com is the place to get easy, allergy-free recipes, all free of sugar, gluten, and dairy. But that's not all you'll get when you visit yumfoodforliving.com. You'll get resources for all kinds of things like wellness articles, videos, podcasts, a blog, all to help you create easy, healthy living. There's even a 50-page downloadable book introducing you to the philosophy of yum. Don't wait. Visit yumfoodforliving.com. Yumfoodforliving.com. That's yumfoodforliving.com. If you like to spend your television viewing time learning about some of the things that you may have missed in history class or if history was your favorite subject, then you should check out the link to the History Channel on the HealthyLife.net advertiser page. Order DVD sets by series or by subject matter right from our homepage while you still enjoy your favorite HealthyLife.net show. You're listening to HealthyLife.net, the radio network that brings positive talk with positive change to make your world a little better. Welcome back to the Dr. Teresa Nicasio Show. For those of you who are just joining us, on today's show we're talking with nutritionist Cindy O'Meara about her new documentary called What's With Wheat, which is on Netflix, uh, it's on YouTube, it's on iTunes, it's like all over the place. This is the movie to watch now, folks. It's now in North America. Uh, it wasn't accessible there before. Um, right before the break, we were talking a little bit about the shikimate pathway, which is really fancy language and it's a fancy process, but talking about how glyphosate, which is actually um, used on most wheat products, people say, why is it that wheat's a problem now? So Cindy's been talking a little bit about the hybridization and talks a lot more, there's a lot more about it in the movie, uh, but there's also this interactive effect with glyphosate, which is a pesticide which um, only kills plants and, um, and bacteria, but as we were just talking about, our body is 80% uh, or 90% bacteria and only 10% human cells, so it actually is really harming us, and they're finding very specific ways that it's interfering with the digestive process, but also the absorption, and it's, it's interfering on the uh, absorption of, of the fructose, uh, kind of some of the sugars in our body, um, and it's also impairing, which we just were talking about, uh, the development of, because this is where our neurotransmitters are developed, which is, is what makes, keeps us happy. Uh, and I, one thing I wanted to mention, Cindy, is um, I like, well, I see a lot of people who come in with IBS, but also with, um, you know, with different things, depression, anxiety, uh, and pain, and so forth. I do a lot of, of different work. And one of the things I do is I, I tell people, go back to your doctor and get some tests done. 
uh, for one thing, get tested for uh, celiac disease. Not that you'll have it because you probably won't because there's a lot of people who have something called celiac. I'm going to have you talk about in a moment celiac, non, uh, gluten, non-celiac gluten sensitivity. Uh, but I tell people get tested, get your blood sugar tested, get your thyroid tested, get your iron tested, get a lot of those basics tested uh, before you do this, but then to go on the elimination diet that you talked about having gone on and which I went on, which has basically saved my life, I know, and I think it's, it sounds like it's really changed your life as well. Um, but after they've done that, what I do is I tell people for just for, for one month, just for fun, see what happens if they take all gluten, all dairy, and all sugar, just those three foods out, just those three foods for 30 days and see what happens. And literally, Cindy, I have had people who maybe were struggling with severe anxiety and depression for years that they could not believe that they felt like they found themselves again. They were like, I didn't know I'd ever be me again after doing that. But, you know, so, I think that all these diseases that we're now seeing is an opportunity for change. Yeah. But what we view these diseases are as diseases and then try and fix it with the medication. And yeah. if people view them as an opportunity to change, because if they don't change, they're going to get the same results. But if they do change, they will get different results. And I think that that's where we've got to start changing our paradigm and our yeah. way of thinking is to realize that disease is a, an opportunity for change. They are. And when, when it's something that is so treatable with no negative side effects, <laughs> except maybe a little yeah. bit of a detox reaction for a week or two, uh, this, is, this is a no-brainer and maybe to keep the train wreck from autoimmunity developing. Can you talk a little bit about, uh, you know, we've been seeing um, such an increase in the number of people with autoimmune diseases, and, you know, including celiac uh, and, I don't know, non-celiac, uh, celiac, uh, non-gluten, uh, non-celiac sensitivity, who knows exactly what that is. Um, but you've also been touched by, you know, your sister had crest. Uh, uh, Sue, who works with you, had MS. She was able to reverse that and is now running and writing books about it. Um, can you talk a little bit about this, this shift and what you think is, is going on uh, that might be contributing to that and, and maybe leaning right into the leaky gut issues? Yeah, sure. Look, I think it, and, I, and I, everybody seems to be coming down to this, um, that our autoimmune problems, non-celiac gluten sensitivity, um, our, our increase in allergies, um, the nervous system problems that we seem to be seeing seem to all come down to the ability of the gastrointestinal tract to have a healthy microbiome, to be protected by that microbiome, and to make sure that the wall between the gut or the gastrointestinal tract and the blood system, you know, inside our body uh, is strong, opens and closes when it needs to uh, and uh, is working at its best. And, and when we start to get that back into play, then you see a reversal of, of all of these symptoms. And, and like you said, my sister, uh, she actually died from Crest. She died from the E um, part of Crest, which is esophagitis. She ended up getting an esophageal a cancer that was eight centimeters. And um, back then, and she's only been gone 10 years, just over 10 years, back then, we didn't know this stuff. We had no idea. It was just beginning, like Dr. Alicia Fasano in 2003 had only just discovered the opening and closing of the gastrointestinal gates. Even though we talked about leaky gut, we actually didn't know that it was a process. We always thought it was stuck, like closed. And, you know, if you ever said leaky gut back 10 years ago, you know, you were, you were just absolutely um, heretical in your thinking. Um, mm-hmm. It didn't exist. Things like that don't exist and, until the beautiful Dr. Alicia Fasano proved that there is a protein that helps with that opening and closing. So it is because of uh, the microbiome being decimated, the increase in leaky gut, our environmental factors, the food that we're consuming, the food particles going into the blood system, the blood seeing it as the enemy and activating not only cell-mediated but, you know, a whole host in the body, which then through, and this is only one way, through molecular mimicry, we start to see... Um, our body being eaten by itself, such as in thyroid disease, Hashimoto's, or MS, which is the nervous system. So that's with, you know, autoimmune diseases. But if we then look at non-celiac gluten sensitivity, which is another problem 
uh, that we're seeing gluten causing is that it, it doesn't seem to have autoimmune factors. It seems to have a life of its own. And uh, Dr. Rodney Ford, who is a gastroenterologist and a pediatrician in New Zealand and in my film, he talks about the fact that he believes, and through research, is that it is our nervous system that is reacting in this non-celiac gluten sensitivity. And when you think about our nervous system, it is the brain, so anxiety, depression, schizophrenia, all of these things that could be happening in the brain as a result of NCGS, or it could be our joints, because our nerves go to our joints. It could be in the blood system. It could be, um, you know, thyroid, pancreas, type 1 diabetes. So there are many places that we're starting to see um, this NCGS or non celiac gluten sensitivity uh, showing up. And even though you don't have celiac disease and you don't have a wheat allergy, you can still have non celiac gluten sensitivity. And Alicia Fasano at the moment is trying to find biomarkers so we can have proof that this disease actually does exist. Um, and, but people know that the minute they, if they haven't got a wheat allergy and they don't have celiac disease and they don't have an autoimmune disease, if they go off wheat, they feel absolutely amazing. And I'm one of those. I'm, I'm sure I had NCGS. I've never been tested, but the thing is that I feel fantastic off it, and I wouldn't even bother eating it. Everyone says to me, oh, don't you miss it? I go, I don't miss aches, pains, migraines, anxiety, dry skin, dry hair, non being able to stretch. You know, you just don't miss those things. <laughs> exactly, yeah. And so for those of you who haven't yet heard Dr. Fazano's, uh, um, he was on the show, so go to the TeresaNicasio.com website, and again, there's a profile. And as you know, for Dr. Fazano, he talks more about the, you know, the zonulin and how we have zonulin in our body, which tells the gut to open up and be permeable. But normally it shouldn't happen. But it turns out that, that the gluten molecule, the gliadin, cannot be broken down. And that the, the gliadin itself triggers the zonulin and it tricks the body to open it up so that all kinds of crud, you know, can get into, big particles can get into the bloodstream and end up creating things like MS and autism and, um, and go to the pancreas for type 1 diabetes and so forth in situations where people wouldn't normally get those things. So um, it's a huge brand new uh, understanding, but, um, you know, not just, in, uh, I have other uh, of his uh, YouTubes that are also on his page that you can access and, and his contact information. But, um, but anyway, we need to, again, go to another break. But we are going to be talking more uh, with Cindy after we get back. So don't go away. There's a book that makes it so easy to embrace a healthy, gluten-free lifestyle, even kids will like it. Filled with heartwarming stories, food as medicine health tips, easy allergy-free recipes, and creative culinary inventions, the award-winning book, Yum! by Dr. Teresa Nicasio, is your source for all of this and more. So make gluten-free living easy, tasty, and fun. Get Yum! plant-based recipes for a gluten-free diet at Amazon.com or visit yumfoodforliving.com. That's Yum! foodforliving.com. What does HealthyLife.net and Amazon.com have in common? Well, they're both available on the Internet. They both give great value. But most important, most of our positive program hosts and guests are accomplished authors, and their books are available from, you got it, Amazon.com. Now it even gets better than that, because when you're listening on air to a HealthyLife.net host or guest, you can go directly to Amazon.com, and you can order your book while you're still listening to your favorite HealthyLife.net program. So when you hear an author you like, go to the homepage of HealthyLife.net and click on Amazon.com. When you have a food allergy or dietary limitation, Dr. Teresa Nicasio knows it's hard to give up the foods you love, so she decided to put on her chef hat and give you affordable, personalized culinary consultations that will light up your taste buds. You'll explore substitute ingredients so you can enjoy your favorite foods again. She'll even help you make food preparation easy and guide you on your path to healthy living. And to get started, all you have to do is call 604-445-6463. That's 604-445-6463. HealthyLife.net, the positive radio network. YumFoodForLiving.com is the place to get easy, allergy-free recipes, all free of sugar, gluten, and dairy. But that's not all you'll get when you visit YumFoodForLiving.com. You'll get resources for all kinds of things like wellness articles, videos, podcasts, a blog, all to help you create easy, healthy living. There's even a 50-page downloadable book introducing you to the philosophy of yum. Don't wait. Visit YumFoodForLiving.com. YumFoodForLiving.com. That's 
yumfoodforliving.com. HealthyLife.net, the positive radio network. Welcome back to the Dr. Teresa Nicasio Show. Today we are with nutritionist and filmmaker of the, of the documentary, What's With Wheat, which is now available all over the place. It, this is a must-see movie, folks. This is a must-see, I'm telling you. It, makes, it simplifies a lot of the science, and it helps understand what's with wheat, what the deal is. Why is it um, uh, a problem when it hasn't been for forever? Um, and before we get into that question about what's, what's been going on and you know how how wheat has changed which is seems to be contributing to this problem um uh, there's there's a bit more about the shikimate pathway. Can you talk a little bit more about the shikimate pathway and other um, other implications of it, uh, Cindy? Yeah, because a lot of people um, you know think that the shikimate pathway is just about the tyrosine, the phenylalanine and the tryptophan, which is a precursor to our neurotransmitters. And 90% of our neurotransmitters are made in, in the gut. And we know that we have a brain-gut axis, um, which affects, you know, where the gut will affect the brain and, and vice versa. So, you know, that gut feeling, people talk about it, or I can feel it in my gut. We, we know that these two things are very much um, a part of each other, and they're just beginning to go, okay, well... We need to look at both uh, when we're looking at diseases of the brain. We need to be looking at diseases of the gut as well. But what happens is that there is a, as, it, as the sycamate pathway goes through, there is a compound called charismate. And, and charismate also is the precursor to coenzyme Q. Now, what I find interesting is mm. coenzyme Q uh, is something that has been identified as something missing. And, you know, it's a, a huge supplement that people are taking right now. Hmm. The other thing that will help is is, is folate. It will help um, us convert folic acid to folate. Mm-hmm. But I think one of the most important things is uh, enterobactin is also produced as a result of curvmate. And it's required for iron transport. And I'm noticing a lot of people uh, with iron issues, like low iron hemoglobin, um, low iron storage, ferritin, things like that. And it could all be coming back to um, the fact that we have got glyphosate in many of our foods. It's, it's found in uh, animals. It's found in plants. Um, they're using... They're, they're actually now um, putting on plants and sports grounds and playgrounds and um, between plants where the weeds are growing. They're actually putting... Around the world, many billion ton of this compound, not just a few ton. There's a lot going down. So um, when we see this, as Stephanie says, says, this train wreck that is happening, and that's just one of the actions, which is the destruction of the shikimate pathway for our bacteria, and then we see this knock-on effect. So I, I felt that that was really important that, people realize it's not just about our neurotransmitters, but it's about our iron transport, it's about coenzyme Q, and it's about folate. And one of the latest things that Dr. Stephanie Seneff has been writing to me about is that she believes that glyphosate um, replaces glycine, the amino acid glycine, in the amino acid chain, which then Mm. starts to cause uh, DNA damage and mutations. So it's far-reaching what is happening out there, and it's... Um, it's time we all wake up and we all go to our council and ask the council to stop spraying uh, glyphosate and, um, and perhaps even, you know, like I said before, is that have a look at our food production and make sure no glyphosate is being sprayed on it. This is, this is so huge. I mean, we just, uh, another guest, um, uh, that, that, uh, we, well, we've had on is, uh, um, Dr. Lauren Brown talking about also fertility and you're talking about the folate and we're talking about iron. I mean, these things are really important for, you know, around fertility as well and just, it's part of why the, part of the fertility diet. You know, taking gluten out is really important, but, you know, coenzyme Q10, you know, we have a huge coronary, uh, heart disease problems. We've, uh, and, and again, looking at the issues around the, the, the sugar metabolism and what, what's happening and the increase in diabetes to, what, 50% of the U.S. or, you know, population. Um, this is big, this is big stuff. So can you talk a little bit about the, um, some of the agricultural methods? You know, there's, there's, there's some money going on here. There's some money implications, uh, with, with, uh, with wheat. Wheat is 
big business, and um, there's the agricultural, and then there's the productions, you know, the products that we find. Um, we find uh, wheat and, and uh, um, um, uh um, anyway, we, we find, like, I'm walking yeah. on my brain. Um, we okay. find the products in here, the sub-products from. Can you talk a little bit about that? Sure. So um, by, in 1970, it was indicated that uh, we needed more food. And the Corn and Wheat um, Board, I'm sure, wanted more of their food to be grown. So there was a gentleman by the name of Dr. Norman Borlaug who hybridized a wheat grain with another wheat grain out of Japan called Norian. And... Um, made uh, a, a hybridized wheat grain, I guess, that had a shorter stalk, um, more grain could grow on it, and it increased the yield. It didn't necessarily increase the nutrition. They weren't interested in nutrition. They were just interested in um, more uh, yield. This was planted first in Pakistan and India, and um, it was called the Green Revolution, and there was nothing green about it. This was when mm. they realized that this grain that they had produced uh, was susceptible to pests and so more and more chemicals started to be sprayed on it and um, and and this was a, a real issue and if you have a look where this happened in Punjab in India which we have Dr. Vandina Shiva on the movie talking about this, mm -hmm. this is when we started to see an increase in cancer in Punjab and diseases in Punjab and fertility. There was a lot of problems that happened in Punjab as a result of, of this happening. By about the 1980s, it then became prevalent in Europe, uh, sorry, not Europe, America, Australia, and um, parts of Africa. And um, more and more chemicals started to be sprayed um, on it. There were more weeds uh, that seemed to come with this new wheat grain. Did they come with the grain? And the only chemicals that could get rid of those weeds were chemicals that the wheat grain um, you know, sellers had. It was. It was. It just became this craziness about um, how much chemical we needed to to make these monocultures work. But it wasn't until nineteen about the nineteen nineties, late nineteen nineties, early two thousand, that um, they realised they could use Roundup on non-GMO Roundup foods such as wheat, canola oil. I mean, sorry, canola um, plantations that they um, started to spray it three weeks before harvest and that would kill off um, and produce a higher yield. But the glyphosate stayed within the seeds and the grains and so mm. we become more and more ex exposed to it. So that, that's the whole agriculture and until we stop this practice, we're going to see more and more glyphosate um, in our wheat and in our flowers and in everything else that is made from it. So let's look at the, the things that we will find it in. It will be found in medications. Um, it, it can be found in vitamins and minerals. In actual fact, vitamin C, the very origin of vitamin C is either wheat or corn. Now, is it um, genetically modified Bt corn and or is it wheat that's been sprayed with glyphosate? But that, that then ends up um, as our ascorbic acid. Um, we're actually finding uh, the wheat in... And not only additives, preservatives, flavorings, vitamins, minerals, medications, it's, it is everywhere. In actual fact, it's pages and pages of, uh, of things that we've listed in the six week no wheat that ha is in wheat. It's scary, like yeast extracts. <laughs> I could keep going, but um, yeah. you might need to see the list because <laughs> it's huge. Yeah, no, it's, it's pretty crazy. And, and again, the movie, you see a lot more about the different, some of the different things. And, and, and the other thing, and we know we have to go to another break, but the, the, you know, when you, uh, learning, I mean, I didn't realize it was, I knew it was a lot of times, but there's like 10 applications of poison to uh, conventional food, even before it gets to being processed um, in, you know, in the growing process from seed to, to you know, it, you know, as you're talking about. So there's, there's just a lot of stuff that we have been, our poor bodies have been trying to cope with. Um, but after the break, Cindy, I'd like, uh, if we can talk a little bit more about what, what we can do, uh, some empowerment, um, that would be awesome. And so, folks, don't go away. We will uh, be back with Cindy O'Meara after when we come back. Being inspired by a speaker while learning everyday positive information that you can use to help your life is exactly what Dr. Teresa Nicasio does when she speaks in front of your group. From healthcare professionals to special needs parenting and everything in between, Dr. Teresa Nicasio can customize topics for your group on everything from health to psychology. 
To book Dr. Teresa Nicasio as a speaker for your group, visit yumfoodforliving.com or call 604-445-6463. That's 604-445-6463. If you're like the 8 out of 10 women that say finding genes that fit is a problem, well, your problem is solved. Lee Genes has done extensive research, and they have genes that fit. There's even an online Lee Fit Finder so you can find the right fit for you. Imagine jeans that instantly slim you with a custom fit and no gap waistband. And guys, kids, Lee has jeans for you too. Click through to Lee's Jeans on the HealthyLife.net advertiser page and get what fits. When you have a food allergy or dietary limitation, Dr. Teresa Nicasio knows it's hard to give up the foods you love, so she decided to put on her chef hat and give you affordable, personalized culinary consultations that will light up your taste buds. You'll explore or substitute ingredients so you can enjoy your favorite foods again. She'll even help you make food preparation easy and guide you on your path to healthy living. And to get started, all you have to do is call 604-445-6463. That's 604-445-6463. There's a book that makes it so easy to embrace a healthy, gluten-free lifestyle, even kids will like it. Filled with heartwarming stories, food as medicine health tips, easy allergy-free recipes, and creative culinary inventions, the award-winning book, Yum! by Dr. Teresa Nicasio is your source for all of this and more. So make gluten-free living easy, tasty, and fun. Get Yum! plant-based recipes for a gluten-free diet at Amazon.com. Or visit yumfoodforliving.com. That's yumfoodforliving.com. Radio your way. Healthylife.net. Welcome back. You're listening to the Dr. Teresa Nicasio Show, where we celebrate life, love, and kindness, while also acknowledging the real challenges that are a natural part of living and answer the questions that matter to you. If you're just tuning in, we're here today with nutritionist and filmmaker Cindy O'Mara talking about her new awesome possum documentary called What's With Wheat, which I've already watched twice plus. Um, Cindy, you know, let's, let's, we talked a lot about some of the dismal, dismal stories, and, and we didn't get to talk a little bit about more about your family history and how the pesticides probably uh, created uh, hemophilia in your in your extended family, um, your, your mom's family. Um, but again, you can read about that on on the page that I have, and more about on her website. Um, but but let's just talk a little bit about you know, what changes would you recommend uh, that we take if we want to make improvements in our diet and kind of turn start turning this around. So a lot of people might be thinking right at the moment that, uh, oh, well, I'll just eat gluten-free. I'll go to those gluten-free products. But I'm one for reading ingredients. I don't read nutritional labels. I don't care about the fat, protein, salts, anything like that. I want to know what is in the food. So I go to the ingredients. And when you go to the ingredients of many of these gluten-free foods, you will see that they're they're filled with the same types of foods. So it could be a potato starch, a tapioca starch, a rice starch, They'll have flavors, um, they'll have guar gums and xanathan gums. So they'll have everything in there that is a refined food as opposed to whole foods or real foods. So let's just dismiss that so nobody even thinks that that's where we're going. Although if you do read the ingredients, there are some gluten-free foods where you actually see real food and real whole foods. So yeah. don't mark them out completely, but for the most part in the grocery stores, I don't see anything worth we're purchasing. Yeah, it's most it's it's getting a little better, but we've got a long way to go. Holy, we do have a long way to go. But you're right; there are some wonderful, ethical, amazing companies out there that, you know, I know I can trust them. And if I I purchase a product from them, I usually don't have to keep checking on them because unless they get bought out, um, because I know their ethics. And I actually call them. I actually ring them and talk to them. And and I think this is where we need to go: is that we have to become. Um, educated about where our food's coming from. So the first thing I do is I love farmer's markets. And I was in the middle of Los Angeles a week and a half ago on a Wednesday, and there was an amazing organic farmer's market in the middle of Los Angeles. So you cannot tell me that you cannot find a farmer's market. Mm -hmm. This way you get to speak to your farmers. You get to say, how do you produce that? Oh, you've got organic certification. Where is your farm? And um, and purchase from these guys, and I buy, and, and people are going to be going right now, I don't have time for what you're talking about, Cindy. 
But if you don't take the time now for your health, then you are going to take a lot of time later for illness. So for me, I make all my food from scratch or I go to places such as restaurants and cafes where they have the same beliefs um, and um, they, they, they think the same way that I do and they eat, they find seasonal foods, they cook from scratch, you know when you go there um, that you will get everything that you would have made in your own home. So, for instance, I was in New York just a couple of weeks ago. It sounds like I'm just a travelling person, but I am at the moment. But I was in New York and I found the Dig Inn. And that was all about seasonal foods. You get to choose your grain or your greens. So I would choose the greens because I love my greens. And then you get to choose your protein, which is usually like a wild salmon or... Um, you know, some sort of um, meat or protein. And then you got to choose out of 16 different vegetables, you got to choose two vegetables. So here mm-hmm. you can go in there for a reasonable price and get the most amazing meal. So if you don't have time, then find places that will do this for you. But we make everything from scratch. We know that it's not being in contact with wheat or chemicals or pesticides. or We know that it is the best that we can possibly find and then we feed our family. So for many people, this is scary because they don't know anything from their breakfast cereals, their you know, crackers, their cookies, their sandwiches, their pasta, their pizza. And mm-hmm. so uh, we created a program, and I'm sure you have the same type of thing, but we actually created a program for the, the person that just looks at the movie and just goes, I don't know what to do. I don't know where to start. It's too hard. I'm not going to do it. Yeah. So we take it step by step. We do it bit by bit. So these are for people who are not in crisis. But if you're in crisis mode, then you need to do it now mm-hmm. um, because the results are phenomenal. I got a, uh, a beautiful letter yesterday from a gentleman that spent 10 years debilitated. He's on welfare. He can't work. He's in pain. He's in a wheelchair. All of these things he was telling me. He said, I watched your movie, and I just went, I'm the one. He said to, in the letter, he was the one in crisis. He needed to make some changes. He said within 10 days, he noticed unbelievable changes in his health. He wants to shout it to the rooftops. And, you know, this is a man in crisis who just said, I've got to do this and I'm not going to, I'm not going to, I have no other option but to do it. And I think having a coach, by having somebody lead you, having somebody that has more information, educating yourself is the best way in order to do this. And, and one of the things that I do it, um, with my company is I've created a 12-month education program and it's on just food and nutrition and it's called the Functional Nutrition Academy. And in this program, um, either people do it for their own interest, they just want to learn more and be able to feed their families better and heal themselves, but there are many that have gone on to become coaches to go into people's homes, to look at their pantry, to help them clean out their pantry, to help them set up their kitchen in order to create a new way of eating for their family. So we know that there will be people who can do it by themselves. They'll just go out and get the information and they'll do it. We know that there will be people that need a little bit of help, so they'll have people like you, Dr. Teresa, and me, which will help them on their journey. And then they're the ones that need the hands help. And for those people, you know, we have coaches that can help them. And I'm sure you do the same, Dr. Teresa, you know, because you can't be going into everyone's kitchen because it can take up to a day <laughs> to do yeah, this. No, I mean, it's, well, and it's, and it's also a, a very much a, a, an ongoing process, too. And right. it's, it's like just shifting even where you, where you go grocery shopping, where you, you stay away from those middle aisles, right? And, yeah. uh, but like learning a, a different way of thinking and the way, a different way of actually seeing and realizing what food is and what food is not. Um, you know, the other thing I think that's great, I love that you're, you know, holding people's hands and, and, and the idea of, uh, one of the things I like with your things too, and this is very much how I like to approach it, is, you know, you can ease in slowly. You can, you know, add one new recipe, um, uh, you know, uh, at a time, that you, maybe for the next week or month you, you do that, and then you add another, and over time you get more empowered. But the other thing I really am a big proponent of is if you can't go to a farmer's market, let's say uh, finances are really hard and you can't, you have a really hard time, Talk to farmers.
farmers. A lot of times they have things that they, you know, don't sell or um, talk to people who are, who are your neighbors who, uh, or if you're not able to grow, or maybe somebody can get a plot, a community garden plot, but also other people who are gardeners love to share their harvest. And you can start to, um, so you don't have to have a lot of money. People think it costs a lot of money to eat healthy and organic. It doesn't have to. Uh, I mean, right now I've got like this massive abundance of of oregano and and uh, and mints and lemon balm and and uh, I'm going to have tons of fruit soon and it's so much fun to share and so don't be afraid to ask people um, and to even get involved in projects that are like community garden projects and, and I love at the end of your movie how you mentioned about that city that they instead of growing like grass and and flowers that, you know talk a little bit about that real quickly oh yes Tudmorden is the name of the town and it's in um, England and. It's just a small community, and there was a an activist, a food activist there by the name of Pam Warhurst, and you can actually water, watch her on a TED video to look up Pam Warhurst. Oh, nice. And what she did was that she just decided that there were many pieces of land available um, that you could um, grow food on. And because yep. they were kind of in what she believed was a food desert, she just did it without, a, she, I love the way she talks, she says, without a committee, without anything, I just went and planted food trees. And yeah. I went there, and it's, it's amazing, all the plots of land in front of the railway lines, in front of uh, hospitals, police precincts, um, institutions, in the playground. You will find these plots that are filled with food that anybody can go and, and can eat. And the community become very, you can actually go on a tour. I think there's 19 plots in all. And you can just go on a tour. They give it to you at the information centre. But I think as councils, this is what we need to do. We, we have an amazing urban street in, um, on the Sunshine Coast. And it, it goes for like 14 blocks. One guy mm. started and he just put a bit of food on his um, sidewalk lawn. Mm-hmm. And the neighbours said, oh, we want to do that. And now they have a banana plantation, they have a citrus plantation, all in an urban community. And it's, it, it's just amazing. It's absolutely amazing. It's getting worldwide attention because our mm-hmm. council decided to cut down some of the citrus trees because they were a hazard to the pedestrians. Oh, jeez. Crazy. But it's good because it's worldwide attention. This is what gets worldwide attention is when a stupid council does something like this and Mm -hmm. then, you know, we have things changed. But I see this happening all over the world. And, uh, you know, Jane Gruber, she's been on the show. She's been talking about some of these worldwide initiatives, too. But, Cindy, we need to be finishing. Thank you so much for joining us today. Thank you for having me. It's been wonderful talking with you. And I hope that all of you have enjoyed today's program. Um, be sure to join us next week when Kristen Andrus is going to be with us talking about goodness. And uh, let me know if you have any questions you'd like for me to be asking any of our upcoming guests. Uh, you can send those in. I'm clicking my Ask Teresa button. Um, my web address, again, is TeresaNicasio.com. And, um, and, again, information about Cindy is on the website as well as all of the guests. And... Gosh, it's been great. Thank you again, everyone, and thank you, Cindy. I'm Teresa, and this has been the Dr. Teresa Nicasio Show. Until next time, have a great week.